Hi everyone, welcome back. We're going to move on to the next stage of the uh, project now. And we're back in Maya. And what we're going to do is start building some material shaders to apply to our packaging to make it uh, sort of look a little bit more realistic in preparation for our final render. So uh, you can see here I've got uh, my, my bottle. Uh, and it still has the uh, checkerboard uh, texture that we put on it uh, when we were doing the UV templates. And what we're going to be doing is replacing the uh, this material piece by piece. And we'll be uh, using some of the, uh, or we'll be using the images that we created in Photoshop uh, to make the, the bottle look a bit more realistic. So uh, let's start off. Um, I'm going to start off with the bottle, uh, the main bottle piece, which is this. Um, and it's going to be the more complicated section. So I sort of want to get that out of the way um, first. So the first thing I'm going to do is right click and hold on the bottle. And I'm going to come down to assign. Uh, we can go assign either new material or favorite material. And whichever one you choose, basically, uh, you'll just want to select a blend material. Um, assign favorite material is probably easier because you can just select it here. But if you hit assign new material, it'll open up this panel and you'll find blend up near the top just here. Okay, so uh, when you assign that material, uh, the attribute uh, editor will pop open here on the side and you'll need to select blend one just there. Uh, now, you can kind of ignore the number. Um, in this case, um, depending if you've added any other blend materials while you've been working, uh, this may have a different number, but basically uh, that's the shader that we've just created. So the first thing I want to do is rename this um, so that it uh, so that I don't get confused with the other shaders we're going to make um, a little bit afterwards. So I'm just going to call this plastic shader like this. and. Uh, what we need to do now is start um, placing images uh, and also connecting other nodes uh, to the different channels, some of the different channels in here. Um, before I start connecting um, any nodes, uh, there's a couple of settings that we can change just through the numbers. Um, down in the specular shading, I'm going to set the eccentricity to 0 0.05 like this. And uh, I'm going to change the specular roll off to 0.65. Now, these numbers are sort of arbitrary. I've been playing around with this a little bit in between videos to try and find a, a sort of a reasonable approximation of a clear plastic. Uh, and these numbers um, seem to give me a reasonable um, uh, kind of. Uh, result. So these are the, the, the numbers that I've come up with. And it's purely just trial and error. All right. Uh, so the next thing uh, I want to do is I want to add in uh, a node called ambient, uh, ambient occlusion into the color channel. Now because this, um, this bottle is going to be um, just a clear plastic, uh, I'm just going to put a, put a um, a node in here that's going to give me a little bit of shading on uh, any of the little nooks and crannies on the on the bottle. So, for example, in where the uh, where the thread is on the the neck of the bottle at the top here, um, it'll kind of make little shadowed areas around the thread and kind of bring the detail out a little bit more. Um, it'll also stop the plastic looking too white um, as well. What we're going to do here is uh, at color, we're going to click on the input. And uh, if you come down to this uh, list on the left and you go down to mental ranges here and select textures, what we want to do is select the MIB ambient occlusion node, uh, which is MIB AMB occlusion. Okay, okay. So the settings that we want in here, we want 32 samples. Now, usually what you want to do is keep these this these values here like this samples value to sort of like a power of two number so that'd be two four eight sixteen thirty two sixty four one twenty eight and so on um, the brightness color this is sort of the 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 regular color for the plastic 
okay, um, in its in its normally illuminated um, appearance. So for me, because I'm going to do just like a standard clear plastic, I'm going to kind of keep it a grey colour. But if you're wanting like a green plastic or a blue bottle or something like that, you can change the colour to to whatever suits. All right. Um, now keep in mind over here, I've actually got my texture switched on using the textured button. That's number six on the keyboard. Okay, um, I'm just going to go with like a, a regular clear plastic for now. So I'm going to um, just dial this back a little bit, probably to about here. So just like a pale grey. And then the dark value is the um, the color, the the color of the kind of shadowed recesses area, er, recessed areas on your bottle. So um, for me, I don't want it pure black. I'm going to dial it up to about here. Um, now, what you guys can do if you dial the the slider up to about here and then click uh, just there, you can see that the um, the value slider here is set um, to about a third of the way across. And you can see over here that the um, the saturation uh, position on this pick is about here. What you can do is just kind of dial this round like this, and then just increase the saturation value. Um, the idea with this is that this color is going to be a darker color, um, or a darker version of the same color as whatever you've got in the bright. So in the bright setting, if you've got like a, like a light green, you want to make this dark green. If you've got light blue here, you want dark blue. Okay, this is basically the shadowed version of this. Um, so for me, because mine is um, going to be a clear plastic, I'm just going to use this um, sort of medium gray color. Okay, so uh, moving down, I want to change my maximum distance to two. Now, basically what this setting is, is um, it's the number of uh, grid squares or grid units that the ambient occlusion shadowing effect on the bottle is triggered. Um, it's the distance between polygons, basically, that are able to trigger the, the effect. So um, basically up here, where we've got this kind of 90 degree join between the neck of the bottle here and this lip, what this ambient occlusion node will do is put this uh, kind of a shadow area in this little join in here. So this distance is basically how far away the polygons have to be before they don't add that little shadow in the, the little joins. Uh, I want reflective. Um, I'll turn on occlusion in alpha as well. Uh, and everything else can stay as it is. Okay. So now I'm gonna click back on my input button or oh, sorry, go to output button, which is this one just here, and that'll take me back out to my shader. All right, so uh, the next uh, input that I'm going to do is um, going to be for the transparency. Now, this one's a little bit more complex in that we have to build this in the hypershade. So I'm going to come over here to the left-hand side of the panel, and I'm going to look for the hypershade perspective button, which is this one just here. Um, there it is there, Hypershade Perspective. So I'm going to pop that open. Now you can also open the Hypershade in a, just a floating panel under Windows, Rendering Editors, Hypershade. And that will open up as like a separate panel um, if you prefer to keep this um, full size. Okay, um, so you can see here, this is our um, plastic shader at the moment, this one. Okay, so it's got the, the title on it. And this is one of the reasons why you want to name your, your um, materials as you create them, so that when you're looking in this list, um, it actually has the name down here. Uh, now, if you click inside this top area, um, you can change the size of the thumbnail. So, like for example, you can click on a large thumbnail, and then you can read the entire name usually. Um, so, yeah, you can see that plastic shader. Um, Obviously, it means you've got to scroll up and down looking for your individual shaders. But, um, you know, if you're not sure which one is which, uh, you can just increase the size of the thumbnail until you can see the uh, the actual name. This one here is a list version. Um, so you can also uh, do it like that so you can find plastic shader. Obviously, there the problem is that you can't actually see the, um, the, the thumbnail for the object. Um, 
So I'm just going to set mine back to normal. And this one here, basically these two toggle either list mode or uh, thumbnail mode. Okay. Um, so find your shader, make sure you've got that selected. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add this to the work area down the bottom. And the way that I do that is I go to graph and I select input connections. And it will take the shader and anything connected to it. So here's the ambient occlusion shader we just used. Okay, and um, it'll place it in here. And what we can do is build up a big network of connections in here. Um, now, if this work area is not visible, uh, just check this button and make sure show top and bottom tabs is uh, active. Okay, so what we're going to do is add two uh, connection nodes. We're going to add a ramp and we're going to add a node called sampler info. Um, I'm going to click this little tab button here uh, for the create bar just under the file menu. And this will open up the, um, uh, the create bar panel with all of our uh, nodes. Now you can see here it's get, it gets really constricted, um, the viewport um, or the interface. So, you know, don't be afraid to just kind of shrink your, um, your viewport down here um, so that you can kind of see things clearly. We don't really need to use this so much other than just kind of selecting parts of the model. Um, pretty much all the work is going to be in here and here for these uh, sessions. Okay, so what we want to do uh, is go to utilities first off, just here, and we want to scroll down and look for a sampler info node and, and there it is there now what you can do to find it more quickly is just type in the first few letters which is s a like that and you'll see that it just um it filters the the list so you can find your sampler info node so just click that and it'll appear in the work area uh, now i'll explain the the effect that this is going to have in a minute um, the next one that we want is just a ramp. So I'm just going to click on, um, uh, let's just go with, uh, whoops, now I need to delete that so that I get my regular list again. Um, so I'm just going to click on Maya and then I'm going to scroll down and look for ramp. Now be careful here because there are two different ramps. Um, there's a ramp shader, okay, and then there's just ramp. What we want is just the ramp, okay. So I click on that and that'll pop over here. Now what this is going to do is pop two nodes in. One is a texture placement uh, and one is the ramp. Now the texture placement basically is the node that um, positions this ramp onto the object later on down the track. So we don't need to play around with this one. Okay, the two important ones are the sampler info node and the ramp node. Okay, now don't forget you can zoom in and out on this view. You can middle mouse and alt pan around, okay? Um, and you can just select the nodes by clicking them or dragging a box and you can just click and drag them around as well. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to take the sampler info node and I'm going to use the middle mouse button and I'm going to drag it onto the ramp. And when the little menu pops up, I'm going to select other and it'll pop open this connection editor and what I want to do on the left hand side is the outputs for the sampler info node which you can see the name of here and I want to select facing ratio just here and for the um, inputs for the ramp I want to find UV coord just here and I want to expand that out and it'll have two coordinates it'll have U and V and you'll remember from your um, the template creation stage that we were using U, U and V coordinates for the template. Uh, what I want to do is select the U coordinate like that. So both facing ratio and U coordinate are highlighted. Then just press close. And you'll see now that those two are connected together with this little line. So we've made that connection. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is actually modify this ramp, and then I'll explain what this is going. This ramp is going to do. Okay, so if you click on the ramp, um, it should open it up over here. If the attribute editor isn't open, if maybe you've closed it for some reason, you can double click the ramp and it'll open it up here. So by default, it has these three colors. We're going to change this in a second. The first thing we want to do is change the type from a V ramp to a U ramp. 
And that's because we've connected the sampler info node to the U coordinate system. Okay, so for this to work, I have to make sure we're using U ramp. Uh, the interpolation, you can either leave it at linear or you can set it to smooth. Okay, it really just sort of, uh, it just tightens the color change up a little bit. You can see there, that's smooth. If I go back to linear, it becomes a little bit more spread out. So either way will be fine. Uh, the next thing I want to do is uh, get rid of um, the colors that we've got uh, in the, the ramp at the moment. Now I'm going to keep this blue color at the top. Whoops. I'm going to keep the blue color at the top. All right, but I'm changing, uh, as far as position is concerned, I'm just going to change that color. Um, and what I want to do is change it to almost white. So if you dial the slider all the way down for the selected color and then back up, you can basically change it to a black and white color. And I want to put it about here on the slider, just a little bit shy of the end. The color in the middle, green, I'm going to click and drag the position circle and I'm going to place it about here. And I'm going to change that to a medium gray color. So I'll drag all the way down to the uh, left just to get rid of all of the color. And then I'm going to dial it up to about halfway, roughly about there. And the final one, which is this red one, I'm going to change that one to almost, uh, in fact, I'll go all the way down to black. So I'm going to click and drag the slider and just drag it all the way down to the end. So what we've got here is this ramp. Now I'm going to explain what this is going to do. At the moment, our plastic um, is looking like this, and we don't have any transparency on it um, at the moment. What this is going to do is it's going to make the plastic transparent the area of the bottle that you're looking at directly at 90 degrees, which is sort of in the middle here, that area will be um, almost completely transparent. And that's being indicated by this ramp color. So this, this position on the ramp is kind of where polygons on the object are at 90 degrees to the direction you're looking at them. So when you're looking directly against a, against a polygon, all right, that's this color. As the ramp comes down, it gets darker. So what that's indicating is as you, as the polygon angle changes, so you end up looking along the polygon instead of directly at it. So because this surface is curved, the polygons right over here on the edge are going to have this level of transparency and a darker color is less transparency. So um, sort of right at the edge, right on the very edge of the bottle, the plastic isn't going to be transparent, okay? Um, just shy of the edge, just here, it's going to be mostly transparent, uh, or sorry, uh, like a little bit more transparent. And then here in the middle of the bottle, it's gonna be really transparent. So that's what this um, ramp is doing. Now, the reason that it's working on the angle of the polygons is the sampler info node, okay? The facing ratio setting that we set um, on the, uh, which is this, value here, this is reading the angle of the polygon um, com and comparing it to the um, angle that we're looking at the polygon from. So those two combined can kind of give us almost like, um, it. basically what it'll do is give us the effect that you get when you have a um, uh, like a car window. When you look directly through the window, it's not as, um, it's, it's very transparent. But if you go to the front of the car and then look down the side of the car at the side windows, they tend to look more like mirrors and um, they tend to look less transparent. So that's what this is going to do. So now what we need to do is take this ramp and we need to drag it into our plastic shader. And what we do is we drag it into the um, transparency. Now, I'm just going to increase the size of this panel here for a second so we can see what's going on. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, let's see. What we can do is, um, there's two ways of doing this. You can either middle mouse drag this on and it'll pop this menu up and you can just select transparency from the list. Now, I know some of the, the mice at school um, on the Macs are not functioning properly. Um, they don't have their mouse button set up correctly in some cases. So um, in that case, what you can uh, do is right click on this little output arrow just here. 
and you can select out alpha. So what this is, is basically the black and white values from the ramp, the black and white colors. So go out alpha, and then you can see we get this line dragging. Go to the input arrow on the plastic shader and right click that and select transparency uh, just here. Now um, with this one, it's, it's asking for transparency, red, green, and blue. So what you'd have to do is select it once. Now what that's going to do is only give us a connection to the red. All right, and you can see that there it's gone red. So then we do it again. So then we go out alpha and right click here and go transparency green. And then we do the same thing again. Um, out alpha, right click, transparency blue. And you can see there now it's updated and it's now clear. All right, so we've now got red, green, and blue. So that's um, our plastic. So you can start to see now we're getting a little bit more of a realistic plastic. We've got a little shiny highlight on it and we've got this transparency working. Okay, um, I'm gonna leave this video here and we'll just continue on building this plastic shader up in the next video.